Hi, it's Kernatex here with the second part of the um, videos about installing a local rsync mirror for Gen 2 and an FS server for the uh, tarballs, the source tarballs. So what we need to do with the NFS server is we first need to check the kernel settings because um, by default, the default kernel settings were used when we set up these Gen 2 machines. Uh, it, it has the client capability for NFS but not for the server part of it. So what we need to do first is to, on the server, is to become the root and we'll load up the menu, menu config for the kernel. So CD user source Linux and then make menu config. Then near the bottom uh, we've got file systems on the first menu. And then right at the very bottom we've got one called network file systems. And you can see the NFS client support has already been set for various versions including version 4 the latest. So we want server support which is this option here, NFS server support, so we'll put a Y there to put the star in. Now you can select version 3, but if you select version 4, you'll find that version 3 is automatically selected anyway. And that's all we need to do, so we'll exit that, save the configuration, and then we do make to rebuild the kernel. And it'll only be a quick build because there's only a small part of the kernel that's been changed, it doesn't affect anything else. So it'll only take a minute or so. Okay, so it's done. So we mount the boot partition, do make install to install the kernel, do make modules install to uh, install the modules. Then we need to rebuild any modules that are built, uh, any packages that are built against the kernel. don't think there are on this machine because it's just a basic machine. No, there isn't, so that's okay. So we just run the grub, mkconfig, minus o, boot, slash grub, slash grub, dot cfg, just to rebuild the menu configuration. And we can do a reboot now so that we activate the new kernel. Okay, so we're logging as root again, and now we need to emerge the NFS utils package, which contains the server as well as the client programs, and it just depends on how you configure it, um, on how it's it's used, whether it's for a server or a client. So NFS utils, so v drops equals two in case it pulls anything else in. Uh, sorry, uh, not 1AV because we want to keep it in the world file, so just AV. So there you go, you can see it's pulling in a few other programs and there's the package itself, so we'll just wait for that one to build, It'll be a couple of minutes.
Okay, so that's installed that package. So the next thing we need to do is we need to specify to the NFS server what directory or what part of the file system we want to share to, to the world, basically. So to do that, we edit a file called etc exports, and you can see it's already there. And it's just a little comment in there pointing to some hints in the uh, man5 directory, uh, man5 for exports. So all we do here is simply specify the location that we want to share. So it's dist files. Remember that's where all the source files are stored. Then we specify the uh, IP addresses that are allowed to access uh, this share. So similar to before, there's various ways of specifying this. And then in brackets, we put some options in to specify uh, what sort of access and things like this sync, which says to um, uh, only share the details of this when the file system is, is complete. You know, if there's any changes going on, to wait for those changes to complete before it uh, shares any data. These last two are quite technical, so if you want to know about them, the, the details are in the manual, in the man page for exports. It describes what they're for. So that's all we need to do to share that that directory there, use the portage disk files. So let's check that I've done this correctly. LW sync, subtree check, no root squash. And we'll just save that. And now we can start the NFS server with etc init NFS start. And yeah, looks like there's no errors there. It started all the daemons that needed to be started. And then we need to also update the run levels so that um, the NFS server is started when we start the machine automatically. And we add that to the default run level. So that should be there now. And there it is there. So that should be the server complete. So what we need to do now is to go to each of the uh, machines that we want to share the source tables with and make a few changes to them. Now, as you saw in the kernel for the server, the client was already set for NFS, so we don't really need to check that. I'm not going to check that because I know it's already there. These are all copies of each other. Um, of course, it might be worth you checking yourself just to be doubly sure because nothing worse than doing all the changes and finding out it's not working. And it won't work if the, uh, if the current uh, kernel has been set up properly. So let's just get rid of that and do that again. Get around this problem with VirtualBox. And make this a bit bigger. Right. So, so now I'm on one of the like client machines, if you like, become root. And what we need to do here again is merge the NFS utils package. As I said, it, it contains everything for the client as well as the server. Uh, it just depends on how you configure it and how you use it, is uh, how it knows what, what it's doing. So I'll just wait a couple of minutes for that install.
Okay, so that is installed. So the next thing we can do is to start the client service up. So AETC initd nfs client start. That's working. And again, we need to ensure that um, it starts when the machine is booted. So we just do RC update add nfs client and we add it to the default run level again. So that's done. So now we can actually test to see if we can uh, view the remote directory on the server. So if I do du minus sh on um, user portage dist files you'll see currently it's 2.2 gigabytes so that's the local um, the size of the local disk files directory so if we now mount the remote one we do that we're doing mount the IP address of the remote machine with a colon forward slash the location on the remote remote machine and the location we want to mount it on on the local machine so that's worked okay for the df minus h we can see it's actually mounted the remote location onto the local location and now if i do a du minus sh on the user portage disk files you'll see instead of being 2.2 gig it's now 490 meg because this is the remote directory that we've mounted on the local directory and as the server is a more basic machine there's fewer packages it's downloaded fewer source files it's downloaded whereas this machine it's downloaded more because it's got the X windows it's got Firefox and so on installed as well so that's why there's more source files so it's normally a bad idea to mount directories or, or devices over directories with stuff in and there's another aspect to this ideally we want all these files on the server because it's the server that's now the main repository for all these source files so if for example I was to emerge uh, Firefox you'll see it's attempting to download the source tarball for Firefox again which is unnecessary because it already exists on this machine the only reason it can't see it is because we're hiding that tarball with the directory of the remote machine so if I unmount user portage disk files retry that emerge Firefox command you'll see now because it can see the local directory with all these 2.2 gigs of files oh okay <laughs> right that has failed because Firefox has been updated so that's that's why <laughs> I've been caught out there um, so okay what we can do then is let's do specify it as an atom so we do that with merge Firefox 60 dot seven dot two because that's the old version there and you'll see it's zero kilobytes it, it, it can see this this source code on the local so if I remount the local one and rerun that command again you'll see it's trying to download the brand new source file so you can see that we're hiding the source files that this machine uses so what we've got to do is we'll unmount that and we can use something like rsync with the options minus AV A is for archive it sets a few options and V will show us what it's doing and we'll say let's send all of the files which is in user portage disk files and we'll send it to the server so any existing files that match won't be transferred because our sync's intelligent enough to work that out but any new files or different files will, will be sent across 
So that's the command we're using. We're syncing all of the, all of the files in this files directory, and we're sending them to the server to put in the same place. Okay, so now the problem here is we're trying to connect with SSH and it's not allowing us to do that because the root is not allowed to connect via SSH. So what we've got to do temporarily is to modify the SSH daemon config file and add in a command as we did before in the Gen2 um, installation called permit root login and we set that to yes and then what we'll need to do is to reload restart the server so it takes on that new setting so etc sshd oh, sorry init the sshd and restart Okay, so now this command here should work. And there you go, it's sending all the files. So I'll just wait for those to sync up. Because there's quite a few extra files that are not on the remote one. But you'll notice things like, um, well, you notice things like GCC and a few others are not there. Okay, so that's done. So what we can do now is just to verify that they have actually copied across, what we'll do is we'll rebound that directory. And now if we do a du, du minus sh on the user portage disk files, we see that the remote server has now got 2.2 gigs worth of files instead of 400 and 80 or 90 whatever it was megabytes so that that shows that they've copied across so let's unmount that again because now we want to remove everything in that directory there's no point in having anything there at all just the whole idea of this was to get all the all the common files into one place so this this directory can now be emptied So df minus h and once again let's have a look at the USH user portage disk files it's empty 24k that's just the directory itself so we'll mount the directory do a DUSH on that directory again and you can see it's 2.2 gig again now what we can do is go one more one better Let's just unmount that and we can actually add the mount command into the etc fs tab file so that the directory gets mounted automatically each time we start this machine off, which is far better than having to um, mount it manually. So I'm just going to copy this, so I'm typing it again and just come down to the bottom here. I'll insert it here and I'll just paste that. So what we're doing here is we're putting in similar to how the FS tab normally works you put the device you want to mount where you want to mount it the file system type and then some options so we're specifying that we want to mount a remote location and we want to mount it at this local location the file system type is NFS and then a couple of options rewrite and underscore net dev and then zero zero for the um, dumping options and so on save that so do a df minus h it's not mounted at the moment we do mount minus oops, mount minus a to mount all the file systems that are not mounted do a df minus h and you can see it's now mounted and that will be mounted and unmounted automatically each time the machine boots.
So let's um, do that. Let's reboot this machine. And we'll check that everything's working as expected. So remember, all the while we're doing this, the server is up and running. It's sitting there with the cron job waiting to be triggered for the next update tomorrow morning. And it's also sitting there running the NFS server, waiting for any requests for that dist files directory to be shared. Okay, so let's move that over. So if I do df minus h, there's the disk files that's being shared. Let's just verify that I can actually see stuff in there. And yeah, there's all the tarballs. So the final thing I'm going to do with this machine is I'm going to update the portage package because that had an update against it. Uh, minus one AV. Oh, right, okay. First of all, I'm not the root. Secondly, I didn't type the command correctly some time. Uh, let's just do a merge. So, because this is an update, it should have to download the package. And if I scroll back up, you'll see it's not currently here at the moment. See, so there's no. Um, portage package there it goes pkg config poplar poplar then proxy proc ps so it doesn't currently exist and there you see it's got to download 1004 kilobytes so let's install that Okay, that's done. So if I re display the dist files directory, we'll go back there again and we can see that the portage package is now there. And if I quickly switch to the server, do the same command, I do p start, just scrub back a little bit. Uh, yeah, there it is, just on the screen. Uh, portage there, there it is. 2369. So you can see that it's downloaded it, and because that directory is mapped, it's actually saved it on the server, even though this machine thinks that this um, directory is local. So that's that machine updated. So what I'm going to do now is shut this one down. And I'm going to boot up the other machine and do the same thing, but this time we'll see that when we update the portage, it won't download it because it'll already exist on the server, and so it knows it can, it'll be able to see it and it won't need to do anything. It'll just start building it. Okay, so I've become the root, and we're going to merge NFS utils.
again, it's advisable to check the kernel to make sure that the uh, kernel is set up for client NFS access. But as as I said, I'm not going to bother checking because I know that it's already it is already configured just because we ran the default configuration for the kernel. So on this machine. NFS utils already exist, something has pulled it in, some, some other package, so it could be KDE, for example, that's pulled in NFS utils, so we don't need to do anything, we don't need to install that. What we do need to do is to um, start the service up, so let's do etc init d NFS client start, so that's worked, and of course we need to do RC update to make sure that the service runs at boot up, the daemon runs at boot up. And that's at the default run level. So there it is there. So I'm going to go straight for editing the FS tab won't bother testing it because I've already tested the fact that it works on the other machine. So same as before, you type in the server address. You can of course, if your DNS is working properly, put in the name of the machine. So the machine and the location, followed by the local location. It's an NFS file system type. And we've got mount options, RW and underscore NFS dev n 0 So let's do a mount minus A. Oh, okay, I've done the mistake there, I should have checked. Uh, 1, 2, 1, 6, 8, 0, 2, 2, 4. What's the W underscore, oh yeah, that should be net dev. Right, that's better. Okay, df minus h. There it is mounted. Let's see how big it is. So is that, there's that two gigabyte size. If I actually unmount it, You'll see on this machine the files are 8.7 gig because there's a lot more that was downloaded. There's Chromium, there's Firefox, there's KDE, there's uh, you know probably some other stuff as well. So what we need to do is that rsync command again to move all these files over to the remote one, to the uh, server, to ensure that we retain all the tarballs that we've downloaded for this machine at least. Uh, so user portage dist files star and they're going to the server
Right, so that's copied that across the server. So what I'm going to do now is delete the local files. So if I did the USH on user portage this files, you can see it's empty, or effectively empty. I do mount minus A and now I can see all 8.7 gig that was transferred and probably a little bit extra as well so that that's all okay so one last thing I'm going to do now is just to update the portage and what you'll see now is that because the um, this files directory is being shared from the server and we've already downloaded it once and it's been saved to the server this time the update won't need to download anything because it'll already see it there and there you go so you can see the savings are already paying off admittedly it's only a megabyte or so but it's it's uh, it shows you know with the bigger packages like chromium and so on that you you will be saving a lot of uh, a lot of disk space um, and like I say probably a lot of time as well because the packages will download a lot faster over a local network than they will do over the, over the internet so uh, that's it really thank you very much for watching the videos and um, if you've got any comments I'd love to hear them so thanks once again goodbye